We know that you all have many, many questions about this new school year, and so we're going to try to address some of them today. I know that the most burning one that you have is when are you going to get to see your schedule and see the classes that you're going to take. So we will have your schedules available on Wednesday of next week, I think that's September 2nd, um, just in time for you to do your supply pickup. So you'll know your classes and be able to come and pick up your supplies on that day. We know that many of you have questions about your classes and are trying to figure them out. And so you're wondering, what's the best way to contact my counselor? Or maybe you've already sent them an email, but you haven't heard back. It's important for you to know that our counselors just started back on Monday and had hundreds of emails to get through and are also trying to clean up schedules. So please be patient. Don't send them emails over and over again. I promise you that they will get to your email, they will get to your questions, and they will respond to you. We have the very best counselors, and I know that they care deeply about you and your questions. So know that soon you'll hear from them with any questions or schedule changes. Let's start by looking at a sample of what your week will look like. So every day you will start with advisory, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Every day we'll start with advisory and it will go from 8.30 to 8.50. You will have the same advisory class whether you're in the rotation for classes one through four or classes five through eight. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, the schedules look the same. You'll see that you have advisory, then you have your four periods that will be live learning that you will access through Teams. Then in the afternoon, you'll have teacher-directed work time. Sometimes you'll be doing small groups, do working on assignments, um, but your teachers will let you know what exactly you need to be doing in the afternoon on those days. Wednesdays is a different schedule. All you have live is your advisory class. So you'll go to advisory, and then for the rest of the day, you will be working on any of the assignments given by your teacher. It's a more relaxed day where you can be away from your screen for a chunk of time while your teachers are busy doing learning and collaboration. Let's look more at that daily schedule where you'll have a 10 minute break in between each of your classes. This is a great time to get up, move, stretch, have a snack, look away from the screen, all of those things to take care of yourself. So you'll have those classes from 8.30 to 12.50, and then you'll have lunch, and in the afternoon, your teachers will have told you what it is that you need to be working on for that afternoon. One of the questions that have, has come up is that some students have schedules that combine high school courses with Northwest Career and Technical Academy, Running Start, and or outside online courses. These classes won't be following the same block schedule or the same rotation as the high schools. How will these schedule inconsistencies work? That's a great question. So because you're going to be having different classes, one through four and five through eight, it's really important that if you don't have a full day at Seahome, that you meet with your counselor and come up with a plan for what your classes would look like. As you saw, Wednesdays have more flexibility, so if that were a day that you could schedule a class with Running Start, that would be a great time to do that, or in the afternoons when it is asynchronous. You'll really need to work with your counselor to make sure that your schedule would work for both your one through four periods and your five through eight rotation. This year, it's even more challenging to figure out the perfect balance between classes at Seahome and classes outside of Seahome but it is possible. You just need to make sure that you look carefully at the schedule and that you know and have an idea of what classes need to be taken where. Another question that came up is, are we required to show up to everything on Zoom? Well, just a reminder that your classes will start on Teams just like they did in the fall or in the spring. So you'll be able to say, okay, this is my class. I click on it to go to first period or to advisory and then your teacher will have a link in there that will either go to Teams or to Zoom, depending on what you're doing for the day. The morning classes you are required to attend. Attendance will be taken during that time. 
Um, and if you can't be there for any reason, you'll still need to check in with Ms. Ladner around your attendance. Another question that came up is that we know that the afternoon will be dedicated to individual work time, but what will happen in the afternoons? So as I said earlier, some of the things that could happen um, would be like small groups that you're meeting with a teacher and collaborating, getting either some extra help about um, figuring out how to do something that you had a question on. It could be that you're working with a small group of peers on a project. It could be that you're completing an assignment like you would in class. There's so many different options, probably some that we don't even know yet, that will happen in the afternoon. It is required that you be ready and available during that time um, so that you can complete the learning. Um, but your teacher will tell you what is expected for each of the periods. You'll see that there's a half an hour slot in the afternoons, um, and those will be by period. The other question that's come up is, so we have this morning time that's live, then we have the afternoon that's asynchronous. Will we also have homework after that? And that will be course dependent. There will be some classes where all you have is the amount of time that's in um, the schedule. For other classes, there will be extra homework and practice that you'll need to do um, to be able to do that practice. The next question we got is in most years, students generally use Anchor to do homework or to read. Um, we often had travel time. So what will the anchor period be used for in this online format? On the website it, for Bellingham Public Schools, it calls out that it will be used to build community, explore social emotional learning aspects, make connections and check in. But what does that mean? So that's a great question. Anchor will not look the same this year as it did in the past, mostly because we can't have travel days, unfortunately. Uh, we sure miss the days where we could wander the building and go to our next teacher and check in for help. But we are trying to put in a new system of support. So anchor class will be, your anchor teacher will be kind of like a case manager or your number one point person. Um, if you have questions or your parents have questions about what's going on, your anchor teacher will be your first point of contact that you go to. We really think that this will be a great way to support students and families rather than having to um, advocate or reach out to eight different teachers. Families will go only to the anchor teacher um, for things like questions around technology or if you need help with your internet, if your family needs any other assistance. Your first point of contact will be that anchor teacher. We will also be using the Character Strong curriculum where we'll be working on some social emotional learning. We'll also be really just connecting and hanging out together in that space, making sure that we um, have a time to laugh and to enjoy each other and to have fun in a space. We'll also have our morning announcements during that period every single day so that you can get up to date information about what's going on what clubs and activities are meeting that day, and stay connected to our Seahome family. So you had a chance to look at our daily schedule, our weekly schedule, and now I'm gonna show you how we're going to be rotating. So if you see the first block in September is bright purple. Well, that is going to be our teacher development. It used to be when we were going to start school, but we know that we have a lot of things to figure out and a lot of things to learn. So your teachers are, and administrators are gonna be busy doing all sorts of learning during that purple block in September. Then we have a day, um, a national holiday, and we start up with school on September 8th. So on September 8th, you will be receiving a link to join your advisory class. During that day, you'll see that they're both pink. This is kind of like an orientation. We know that it's gonna take a while to learn how to use technology, to learn how to use all the tools, and to really figure out who we are as a Seahome community outside of the building. So September 8 and 9, you are going to be meeting with your classes, periods one through four, and your advisory, and learning more about how to use the technology. On Wednesday the 9th, 
you'll meet with your advisory and then you'll have a series of assignments that you'll be showing that you know how to use the technology effectively and efficiently. On the 10th is when we officially begin our first quarter of our semester. So if you look at the 10th of September through October 9th, those are the green block. Anything that's green are periods one through four. So you're gonna have your first four classes for that rotation. Those are the only classes you'll have during that time. You will do some learning, you will have a chance to kind of have a summative assessment or a project that wraps up that learning. Um, but on October 9th, your class is one through four end. At that point, you will not complete any more assignments for that section, that learning ends. You then start on October 12th with periods five through eight. So you will still have your same advisory teacher, but now instead of going to periods one through four, you'll go through periods five through eight. So we'll have a supply pickup for your first four classes um, next week. And then when we move to those other classes, you'll pick up your textbooks and supplies for that other class. And there'll be more information about that coming later. So you'll see that you rotate between your one through four classes, then your five through eight, and you'll do that same sort of thing with learning and a final uh, kind of a summative assessment of that learning. And then you start up back with your classes one through four on November 12th. So this rotation of having periods one through four and five through eight is something that we're going to continue for the first semester and most likely through the entire year. However, after first semester, we're going to evaluate the effectiveness of this model and see how it's going. If we happen to get to stage five of the reconnect plan by second semester, we will look at the every other day schedule again versus this rotation. But right now, we're just planning real firmly for first semester and then see how it goes. We've never done this before. We don't know if it will be a good model, but we do want to look at it, try it, and then reevaluate whether or not we like this structure. Another question that's come up a lot is when you look at that rotation and you look towards second semester, if that block schedule is still in place in the spring, how will AP students successfully prepare for AP tests in classes, mostly in the five through eight? Well, that is a great question because you'll notice on the calendar uh, that the AP classes, sections one through four, finish up and have a nice um, access to be able to take the AP test after having all of the material. The same thing is not true for the five through eight classes. So we're developing a plan to, also, to um, potentially look at taking the late test or, also, or look at um, providing some extra practice opportunities so that both anyone who's in classes one through four or five through eight have equal access to the material and to be able to perform equally on the AP test. So we know that that's an issue and we're working to continue to find ways to address it so that no matter which period you have a class, you'll be able to be successful. Another question is that students are very concerned about the impact that the block schedule will have on learning retention. So when you finish up periods one through four and then you don't have it for a long time, what's gonna happen when you go back to that? Well, that is a great question and we know that we're going to have some of that. We also know that this is a brand new year and a new situation that we've never had before. So we are working to figure out what does it look like to work and to do some intense learning in that first block and really learn show new proficiency, do some sort of summative work, finish that up, and then go for an extended period of time and then picking it up. In several classes, it will be kind of a new unit that you pick up or a new topic of study with a little bit of review or kind of a continuation of some of the ideas. Other classes where you're building on those um, skills our teachers are skilled and are working to figure out exactly how to make sure that, that they do a really good job um, giving students lots of time to practice and then bringing them back in meaningful ways um, where they're kind of recalling some of that information 
while moving forward with the new curriculum. Um, another one that came up on our Instagram is whether or not someone can wear pajamas to class. That's a great question. I love that. Um, we've all kind of transitioned into um, more leisurely uh, wear over the last several months. So our dress code still applies. So um, it shouldn't be distracting to other people. You shouldn't wear um, things that might be um, that might distract other people on their video. So you do need to wear a shirt. You do need to wear proper um, clothes that represent you in a positive light. And sometimes pajamas are okay, but often I find that if I dress up and get ready for the day, brush my teeth and go through a morning routine, I feel much better about preparing myself and be in a better place for learning. So we highly recommend that you get ready, get your routines going, and be ready for the day. But if there are days where you want to wear your pajamas to class that are school appropriate, just like we would when we were in the building, you go ahead and wear those pajamas. Um, if teachers are using breakout groups in the video call technology, whether it's on Zoom or Teams, we have some people who are concerned, how are these conversations going to be monitored to make sure that students feel safe and comfortable in those settings. So just like we would have small groups sitting in a classroom, kind of in pods working with a teacher kind of walking around, checking in with them, we will have that exact same capability that we do whether we're on Zoom or on Teams. So on Zoom, right now we're waiting on the breakout groups for Teams to be available and know exactly what that looks like. But on Zoom, a teacher can pop into any one of those groups at any time and hear the conversation and also check in and move the group forward. So the teacher, just like they would in the class, can pop in, check in, and keep moving. So that's one way that we can use. Another way is we know that students sometimes chat one another on Zoom. And it's good for everybody to know that the host of the meeting gets a full printout of everything that was sent back and forth between um, participants in a Zoom call. So we can we have a record of those pieces, anything that's used on a district device or with um, the school login um, or email, we will have those um, and be able to um, look at those. So we really want students to be positive, to talk kindly to each other, to use these tools for academic reasons, and we also know that those are skills that will need to be taught. So we're working on curriculum and practice opportunities to make sure that students know how to engage appropriately um, with the technology and with each other. We are committed as an activities and athletics department to provide as many opportunities as possible for our students to get involved. So we're gonna start with a virtual club fair uh, and give students an opportunity to see what we have to offer. Hopefully they'll find a couple of things that they're interested in and sign up online, which will give our advisors a list of kids who have uh, those interests, and then they can provide Zoom links for them to get involved right away. Uh, we are also hoping that we can do some activity uh, on campus at some point this fall. Uh, that might be some of our normal athletics uh, through um, our coaches or just some other low risk opportunities. Uh, we're working on those with our return to play committee and uh, hopefully at some point here in September, uh, we'll, we'll have some idea of, of what we can provide for our students um, that is low risk and um, meets the standards of our health department.